You're listening to America Overnight, celebrating 29 years shining a light in the shadows. Thank you for staying with us. Here's our first caller. Hi. What I'm about to tell you, if they found out, I don't know what would happen. If who found out, brother? The men in the suits. They told me it was an industrial accident, but this is something else. Something nobody talks about. Ordinary. This certainly doesn't sound very ordinary, caller. No, not ordinary. Ordinary. It's a town. And it wasn't an industrial accident. I mean, that's what they said, but that's bullshit. Whoa, please watch the language, caller. It may be 2 a.m., but we're still a family show. I, I'm sorry. It's just my brother lived there. They said the town was destroyed, but it wasn't. I went there. The people are gone, but the town's there. It's still there. So the population of an entire town disappears, yet the town remains. Tell me, was the phrase, there is no salvation, written anywhere? I'm... I'm not sure. The same thing happened in Brazil in 23, a village called Hor Verde. More than 600 people just up and left. The government said they were fleeing guerrilla forces, but we know the truth. A mass abduction. As predicted by my regular guest, Dr. Quincy Reagan. Abduction? You mean aliens? That's bullshit! I know they're lying! Now I warned you about the language, caller. I'm afraid we're gonna have to cut you off. And good timing, too. It's time for a short break. Hang in there. America Overnight will be right back. You're listening to America Overnight, broadcasting the truth no matter the consequence for 29 years and counting. Thank you for staying up with us. We've received an interesting letter here at the program. If you'll uh, humor me, I'd like to read it. Dear America Overnight, I can feel myself becoming gigantic. It's constant, a growth in all directions, in each cell. Only when I measure myself, it says I'm the same height. I weigh the same weight. I've read that the universe is expanding. If that's the case, then 5'3 is taller than what 5'3 was yesterday. I feel it all the time, this expanding. I always have. I don't know why. Sometimes it's all I can do just to ignore it. People write about the universe expanding like it's happening slowly, but it's not. We were the size of mice yesterday. Now mice are the size of us, and we are the size that mice will be in two days. How long can this go on for? There must be an end, right? A limit? An edge? What happens when we reach it? Does anyone else feel this? Can anything be done? And that's signed Kate from Michigan. Well, how about it, America? Have you felt the universe expanding? Do you know how to stop it? Should we even try? America Overnight will be right back. You're listening to America Overnight, now in our 29th year, lifting the veil between fiction and reality. Thank you for staying up with us. I've been getting a lot of calls about this meteor in Sterling, Colorado. There are reports of a large spherical container that crash-landed in a field outside town. Some government people reportedly took it away. Now, we happen to broadcast from Colorado, and Sterling isn't far. I drove down myself to check it out with members of the America Overnight team. I don't need to tell you, it wasn't long before we found pieces of metal debris scattered in a field. Listeners, this is yet another instance of an unidentified flying object, or UFO, entering our airspace and crashing. That the government took away the evidence under cover of darkness only compounds the fact that these are more than likely visitors from beyond our planet, or dare I say, solar system. Head on over to our website to see pictures of the spacecraft pieces we uncovered. And while you're doing that, our sponsors would like your ear. America Overnight will be right back. You're listening to America Overnight, mystifying the airwaves for more than 29 years. Thank you for staying up with us. Ghosts. 
We've had many callers over the years tell us of hauntings, voices, and other phantasmagorical phenomena. Today, friend of the show, Dr. Quincy Reagan, tells his story. Quincy. Thanks. This is something I experienced recently while staying at the Chili Pines Motel in Macon for last year's Suspiciacon. I was in room 47. The night manager, an avid listener of the program, insisted I take this particular room. Now, the manager explained that years back, the body of a man was discovered under the bed, inside that wooden border that motel beds tend to have. And the body had been there a week, he said. Guests had stayed there, sleeping with the corpse a foot below him. They only found the body when housekeepers complained about the smell. Hauntings have been reported in room 47 ever since. I happily took the room. I fell asleep pretty quick, checking under the bed first, of course. No ghosts visited me, no chilly spots or flickering lights. But when I woke up, I found myself under the bed. It was dark and stiflingly hot. Luckily, I was able to push the mattress off and crawl out before I suffocated. The night manager was kind enough to find me another room. Oh, there you have it, listeners. What we call ghosts take many forms. Quincy was brave enough to tell his story, and I encourage you to keep calling and writing whenever you encounter something strange, something you can't explain. Maybe you're seeing colors that we have no name for. Maybe your toaster is possessed. Remember, dear listeners, when no one else believes you, we do. America Overnight, we'll be right back. You're listening to America Overnight, now in its 29th year. Or is it? It is, don't worry. Tonight, we're discussing thrift store oddities and one-of-a-kind finds. Peggy's on the line from Biloxi. She and her husband found a beautiful Himalayan salt lamp at a garage sale. Tell us about it, Peggy. I'd heard of salt lamps, you know. Those glowy rocks you plug in, they're supposed to release negative ions. Clear the air. I got one, only four bucks, and I put it in our living room. I thought it would look nice there. It gives the whole room this lovely orange glow. Now, this is usually when the call takes a turn. It's my husband. When he's in the living room, he won't take his eyes off the lamp. He's obsessed with it. If I turn it off, he gets so upset. He says it needs to stay on no matter what. Last night, I woke up at 3 a.m. He wasn't in bed. I found him in the living room, staring at the lamp. He was smiling. His eyes were open, but I thought he might be sleepwalking. So I shook him. He just kept smiling at the light. Then he started to speak. He said, every time a reflection reflects itself, it gets a little greener. I've read that. And then he turned to me. He was still smiling, eyes open. My husband's eyes are brown, almost black. But the eyes of the man in the living room last night, his eyes were green. Sounds just like Decatur. Get everything you can out of her, then call HQ. Peggy, I'm so sorry to cut you off there, but we need to go to commercial. I'd like you to stay on the line, though. My producer, Karen, needs a little more information. Okay? Uh, okay. America Overnight, we'll be right back. You're listening to America Overnight, a beacon in the darkest recesses of possibility for more than 29 years. We have another letter from a listener. This one's unsigned, but postmarked from Toledo. It says, Dear America Overnight, I have the most wonderful appliance for your listeners. It is a miracle of God. A fondue set. A fountain. A blessed gift. Blessed is spelled with a capital B. Hmm. 
Go on, they write. Dive on in. It is molten hot. Perfect for meat. No signature. As far as I know, no fondue set was sent to us here at the studio. Just this letter. Wait. I think there's something else in the envelope. Some kind of black powder. With white shards in it? Bone, maybe? Karen. What is this? Karen? On the air, Karen. Where are you? What? Why is this powder in the booth? Is this... Is this ash? Oh. Oh, God. Karen? How do I cut to commercial? <laughs>